All right, today we're going to be doing a quick cram for AP Computer Science Principles, taking a look at the key concepts, the ones most recently published by the College Board. So the AP Computer Science Principles course by College Board, emphasizing on providing equal access to all, introduces several key practices such as computational solution design, abstraction and program development, and responsible computing. So those are the main things here. All right, so some computational thinking practices, investigating and designing. This involves studying the problem scenario and creating a strategic plan or approach for tackling it. So what this means is pretty much like deeper understanding of troubleshooting and the plan that goes into that. Uh, you could use things like flow charts to represent your understanding of this. Uh, algorithm representation. This skill involves around illustrating algorithms without the use of programming languages. So this is like, once again, flowcharts or pseudocode, things like that, to represent that you understand how code works, not just in one language, but kind of like universally. So the use of abstraction, this is a pretty important one. It eases complexity in programs by focusing on the core ideas and removing intricate details. So there's many examples of abstraction, like functions and classes and things like that. And evaluation and testing here. Uh, this just means assessing and testing algorithms and programs for their efficient efficiency and correctness uh, that's a typo there um, and then exploration of innovations underpinning the practice of responsible computing which involves comprehensive exploration of innovative computing concepts and then the final computational thinking practice here Students are encouraged to effectively collaborate while ensuring safe and responsible computing practices. This just means like collaborating with people while citing them and pretty much that's all that is. It's about stuff around like copyright issues and things like that. So here the conceptual framework, the creative development or the CRD. Um, you can enhance computing innovations through collaboration, use an iterative design process for creative expression, do problem solving through this iterative design. Uh, also, understanding the purpose of computing innovations is very important. Understanding the functionality of code segments, identifying program inputs, and grasping event-driven programming, and emphasizing collaboration and effective design processes. So there are going to be many vocabulary-based questions on the exam. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the split is, and there are a few multi-select ones as well, but those tend to be code questions. So let's take a look at some of the key points in program development. What do programs do with data? Programs process data to extract information. That's pretty much it. That's all you need to know there. So what role do variables play in programs? They're used to hold and store values, and it can make uh, you can make code much more efficient by using more complex variables such as lists and dictionaries. So how are lists and strings used in programs? We just touched on lists, how they're a form of a variable, essentially. So lists and strings are used in programs to store multiple elements, so multiple variables or multiple raw data numbers that you input. Uh, what is data abstraction in programming? So it's a powerful technique that separates abstract properties from concrete details in the program code. This is pretty much just functions and things like that are called abstractions. So how do programmers tackle complex problems? They break down complex problems into similar, smaller pieces by creating procedures with parameters for usability and efficiency. Um, so what is procedural abstraction? Helps manage program complexities by segmenting them into subprograms. So that's what I was talking about with abstraction is functions. That's technically procedural abstraction to be more detailed than that. And it enhances code readability and allows making changes internally without affecting users. If your code doesn't have functions, it's going to be much harder. That's pretty much all you need to know. So what do libraries and existing code provide in programming? Libraries and existing code simplify program creation by providing predefined functionalities. So you've definitely used libraries before if you code in Python for this course, uh, which a lot of people did. Uh, you might use things like Pygame or Tkinter or the graphics library. Uh, those all have documentations and are existing code that you can use. And then what can random number generation bring to programs? Random number generation can result in diversity in outcomes and helps in creating interactive software games and simulations. All right. So next up, representation and organization of data. So what is data representation here? Uh, computers internally store data as bits and represent as numbers, characters, or color. Uh, so the color would be hex code, uh, which differs from how it's displayed. Abstraction simplifies complex data by focusing on the main idea, allowing grouping bits for different data types. So what's data compression? 
Data compression reduces the size of data with different algorithms involving varying levels of reduction and reconstruction guarantees. This is going to be on the test, almost 100% guarantee it. So lossy compression allows for more reduction, but only a, provides only an approximation of the original data. So lossy will be a smaller file size, but not full quality. Now, you won't really notice this in things like audio files, but video files you may. And then lossless is kind of the opposite of that. It uh, doesn't really do much reduction, but it provides an exact replication of the original data. All right, so information extraction. Information involves patterns extracted from data, aiding in identifying trends and tackling problems. It might require combining data from various sources for conclusive insights. That you don't need to know too much about, but it's just useful to just know that in general. Metadata, you definitely need to know this. Metadata are data about data and assist in finding, organizing, and managing data sets. They enhance the use of data sets. So for example, on something like a picture, metadata would be like the time and the date and the location that it was taken. Those are all things that are stored inside the data and are about the data that you're looking at. So what's the data processing challenge? Data processing confronts various challenges like data cleaning, bias, data uniformity, and scalability of systems for processing large data sets. And data organization, programmers represent and organize data in various ways. Variables, lists, and strings are used to store values and multiple elements in programs. Data abstraction is employed to manage complexity in programs. All right, so let's look at another checklist here for programming constructs and operations. So the sequencing of statements for desired results, sequencing is just like the order of code, pretty much, that helps it to run. So incorporating iteration and selection, this is like your if statements and your for loops and things like that for Python, um, and like while loops. So evaluation of arithmetic expressions is just, you know, the mathematic equations, uh, which can be enhanced with random numbers. The manipulation of string operations, um, there's a lot of built-in Python functions that you can do, and stuff like con concatenations, which I believe is abbreviated to concat in the AP pseudocode. Then there's the comparison of variables and expressions. Uh, this will also be things like if statements and like you incorporate uh, things like greater than and equal to and things like that. Uh, the use of logical operators with Boolean values. This is a big thing that's on the test. You need to know how the um, true and false things will work. That's a big part of the AP pseudocode and logic gates are a big part of the AP exam. Uh, and then selection and algorithms based on conditions. This is once again, if statements and control flow in programs using conditional statements. Uh, this is also like if and elif and else and all of those things. So a lot of emphasis on sequencing, selection, iteration, and logic gates. All right, so let's take a look at a deeper explanation of abstraction, simulation, and efficiency in computing. So abstraction is used in computing to manage system complexity by dividing programs into workable subprograms, improving readability, and allowing changes without affecting users. Procedures in programming are an example, an application of this principle. Uh, so those are functions pretty much is just what procedures are. Uh, simulations, which are abstract models of real world phenomena, allow for greater control and freedom in examining these phenomena without the constraints of the real world. So simulations are best used to simulate real world situations uh, without having, you know, possible bad outcomes to them. However, the efficiency of the algorithms used in these simulations is crucial and is measured through the estimation of resource usage. Different algorithms for the same task can have varying levels of efficiency, and there are also problems in computer science that are deemed undecidable. Such problems have no efficient algorithm that can provide solutions. So I pretty much there just talked about, you know, the um, time constraints and efficiency of algorithms, and there are going to be a few questions about that, but not too many. So now let's look at understanding computer systems and networks. Network is a thing that is emphasized heavily on the AP exam as well. So computer systems and networks facilitate data transfer. Fault tolerant systems like the internet incorporate redundancy. You need to know router redundancy. What that means is that there's pretty much just so many routers that are all interconnected that if one of them fails, uh, it can just go around it when data is being sent through the internet to get to the uh, uh, intended location. So they're used to counteract failures and maintain functionality. So parallel and distributed computing is important as well. It involves using multiple computers to solve complex problems more swift swiftly. Uh, comparing different solutions and evaluating their efficiency are essential. 
and then computing innovations. Innovations in this field can have unintended consequences, both harmful and beneficial. Important issues include the digital divide and biases. You do need to know about the digital divide, which is pretty much just the gap in between classes of society and the access that they have to computers and their knowledge about computers. Data transfer. So data is transferred over the internet in packets, which can arrive in order or out of order. Understanding the protocols and routing can make this process efficient. So you do need to know about things like ICP and IP, but not too much about them, probably one or two questions. Then the internet and the World Wide Web, this is pretty heavily emphasized. There's going to be at least five questions most likely about it. So it's essential to understand the difference between the internet and the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web is a global network of computers, or sorry, the internet is a global network of computers, and the World Wide Web is a system of linked pages using HTTP protocol. So secure communication online, encryption processes, and digital certificates are crucial for this. Uh, you do need to know about things like public key encryption, private key encryption, and digital certificates for the test. Um, so what are the implications of computing innovations here? Computing innovations can lead to unintended consequences, making it fundamentally important to consider different legal and ethical aspects associated with them. So you need to think about the Creative Commons, com, commons licenses that we learned about throughout the year. These aspects include intellectual property considerations, such as ownership, value, misuse of technology, and measures needed to safeguard creations. Using legal ways to use others' works like Creative Commons, open source and open access indeed emphasizes ethical responsibility in computing. Misuse of these technologies can lead to harm, legal disputes, and ethical dilemmas. So you need to know about Creative Commons. Open source is a pretty basic concept, um, but also need to know about that. Um, moreover, users must be aware of the risks to personal safety and identity arising from data collection, storage, and online activities, thereby underlining the importance of encryption, strong passwords, and multi-factor authentication for providing personal data online and protecting it. So multi-factor authentication is a pretty basic one, but you do need to know that. Same with encryption. So data protection, its ethics and computing. I believe this is our final checklist that we'll be looking at here. So consider unintended consequences of computing innovations, understand legal and ethical aspects of intellectual property. That's Creative Commons, open source. We talked about that. Utilize legal avenues for using others' work, uh, also through Creative Commons. Uh, you may need to gain permission or something like that. Be aware of the potential harm and legal issues. Once again, ties into these last two here. And recognize risks to personal safety and identity online. Uh, this is just being safe with your stuff, multi-factor authentication, which is again down here. You really need to know the importance of that. And also ensure protection of your personal data through encryption and strong passwords. And finally, understand the role of encryption processes and digital certificates in online security. So let's take a look here at the performance task now, which is 30% of the exam. The written responses will explain your program functionality, which you should have coded in class. These must be done individually, of course, during the exam with no collaboration allowed. So let's take a look at some sample prompts here. So one, describe the process you followed from brainstorming your project idea to completing the code implementation. What steps did you take? So that's an example. They won't be too complicated. Let's look at another one. Share insights into your problem solving approach during the creation of your project. How'd you debug issues and refine your code? This is a pretty common one that appears on the AP Classroom practice tests. So just know things, you just need to know your code and your personalized project reference. And from there, as, as long as you made the code on your own or with someone else, but you understand it, you should be perfectly fine for these written responses. Now, at the end of this course here, I did add in an 11 question quiz. I will have this linked in the description for additional practice and let me know what other reviews you guys want in the comments.